Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to ShortSellPowerHour.com. I'm your host, one of them anyways, Kevin Kaufman. And I'm this your guy, better looking host, Fred Weaver. This guy flopping down with shoes on is Fred Weaver. We're Group 4610. Let's point out the shoes. Huh? Absolutely. Arizona's premier, most funniest, most controversial, most often threatened to be sued by banks, short sale team. Yes. What are so, we here to talk about today? Well, you know what? Um, Coach kicked it off on Monday. Tuesday, we talked about unemployment. Yesterday, Kevin, we talked about um, right. statistics and how we think the market's going to work. And how that's going to impact. And so today, I want to I want to be real specific. Um, whether you agree with us or not, let's talk around what happens when there's a steep decline. Well, let me say it this way. When there's a steep rise, incline in active inventory right. and a steep decline or any sort of decline in solds. Okay. What we have seen, having been in the trenches doing short sales now for for years, two and a half plus years, actually three years three we've years. been doing it, really? two and a half as a team. But what we've seen is we've seen these little rises. We've seen tax credit extensions. We've seen... Um, remember the end, end of the, the year. Remember the Nehemiah thing. The Nehemiah the program. Way, so we've seen these little, way, yeah. these little rises, and and what we have seen is that when inventory goes up and sales go down, banks do not respond to that data quickly. Well, no, they, I mean, they, in fact, they respond very, very slowly yeah. because they pull their data. I'm pretty sure six months behind. Like they don't even want to know it's current. Well, and what we mean by that is that banks um, are going to send out other agents or an appraiser to your property to go do a broker price opinion. That, and they're not going to just take your contract and go, oh, sure, we'll approve it. They're going to go send somebody out to the house, sure. do a BPO, an appraisal, and that value is going to come back. Well, here's inherently the problem with that value. The BPO and the appraisal are very, very heavily weighted on sold comps. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Now, it's not the fault of the appraiser or necessarily the fault of the agent. That's just how the reports are done. They're heavily weighted on sold comps. Yeah. So when they go and pull sales from, let's say, April, May, and June of 2010, months where people were closing on contracts that they wrote in January, February, March, right. April, May. And okay? we're getting an $8,000 And getting tax, tax credit. credit those comps aren't necessarily taking into account the fact that sales are going down, down. volumes going up. So yeah. when sales go down and volume goes up, you typically have prices go down. Right. So what's going to happen is you're going to see when this happens, your active listings that are on the market, yours and other people's, you're going to have to start pricing them even more aggressively. Yep. And those prices are going to get below what your most recent sales comps are because now the market's dropping again. It's not stabilizing or it's not hanging there. It's going to go down. And when it goes down, the bank is very slow to respond to that data because, well, they've got solds up here. They don't want to be the first one to sell a house for less because then that sets than the, the trend, and everybody sets the trend going through. down. Yeah. So, Although I'll tell you, I would rather be first than, than last. Well, you and I would because we understand mitigating loss, yeah. right? Yeah. Versus a bank trying to collect. And yes. we've had that conversation before. Yeah, we don't need to have that. Short sales are all about mitigation, but banks like to collect. So what happens is when they want to collect, they're going to start counter-offering you to these appraised values and these other sales. Yeah. When in fact you're competing with multiple other properties, bank owns and non, that are lower. Yeah. So let's give them a few tactics that we have used to overcome this problem. Yeah. I think back to that story you had with a countrywide representative about a year and a half, two years ago. Oh gosh, in fact, um, that was 2008. But um, it's it's a good story. So, so if you don't mind sharing just, that, just so I'm not mistaken, are you talking about the REO story? Or, um, um, or yes, we're talking, talking about, about the, the one where they countered so, you and then you went to okay. the the MLS for so, the one comp. Quick story. This one's great, guys. Um, we had a, a sale. We had a we had a listing that we had an offer price of two hundred and forty five thousand dollars. Okay, two hundred and forty five thousand dollars. I felt it was very strong. We wouldn't have accepted the contract if we didn't. But this was also a time where the market was doing a steep decline. So I knew there might be a battle. Yep. Um, well, it turned out there was a battle. The BPO came back at two hundred and sixty five thousand yep. dollars. And at the time, Countrywide, I would say, was a lot hard lot harder to work with than they are today. Oh yeah. Um, and my negotiator said to me, she said, here's the BPO, it's 265. Um, 245 is way too low. There's not enough room here. Um, we need to counter to 265. You've got 24 hours to get me back in a, uh, either a signed addendum with raising the purchase price on a new HUD of 265. Way to work with me, by the way, Dana. Um, or we're going to have to close out your file and your short sale's done. 24 hours. 24 hours is what she Very kind me. of her. Yeah, yeah, it's super nice. She really wanted to work with me. Banks, yeah. Uh -huh. So um, Negotiation, mutual agreement. Mutual agreement, sure. So 
I said, okay, Dana, I'll tell you what, 265 is bunk, I'll prove it to you. There's no way that's a good number. I know my market, I would not have accepted an offer that is not a benefit to your company over foreclosure. So I hung the phone up. It was really funny because I, I went to go, okay, well, what's my first move? My first move is to go find out really what is the house worth. Let's go reassess and reevaluate. Look at the cost. It's probably about probably, a month or two since you'd even looked at yeah, it. Yeah, there's probably some data out there I don't know about. To my surprise, to my pleasant surprise, actually, what we found was there was a new listing in the same subdivision. I want to make sure that we're talking about we were in this uh, very exclusive condo community, okay? And there was only a couple different floor plans in this community. And there was a, a brand new REO comp for the exact same floor plan. I mean, literally the exact floor plan. And it was listed just that week for $235,000. So I want you to note they had a BPO of 265, they had an offer from me of 240, mm -hmm. and now that we've got this REO competition, if you will, I'll call it competition at 235. That's fair. Because it's the same exact floor plan. So it's pretty funny because this is one of my funniest BPO disputes ever. I printed out that comp and I sent it to Dana. And I said, Dana, look, I understand your BPO agent thinks the homes were 265. I'm not here to rip on, every, on anybody. But what I'm going to tell you is this. I don't, it's not worth it. There's the exact same floor plan, the exact same model that's owned by a bank. It's owned, in fact, Wells Fargo was the owner of that particular property. Their property is listed at 235. So here's what's going to happen, Dana. If you turn down my file, the home's going to end up in foreclosure, and then you guys will come back on the market in about 90 days. This house that's already sold for 235 or less will be gone, and there'll be other things listed for lower than that. Do you really want to compete against what, what I already have available to you right here and now? And what, I mean, what do you think happened? So you literally sent her one, sent her one active bank-owned comp. Yeah. Because so it's might that be a great tip for people out there? Yeah. Bank-owned comps to me are the best bank comps. Bank-owned comps are the best comps to compete with a bank. Because, because that is the alternative. It, it is the alternative, and it's, it's a real price, meaning that if the bank put it out there for that price, they're going to take the at or around that price. Absolutely. So versus a short sale comp, you've got some agents that don't know how to price short sales and they're, some are good, some are bad. Yeah. Now, yeah. I'm not saying that you can't use a short sale comp, no, I but I'll tell you, bank owned comps are I love are seeing the bank owned comps because I can go here. This is, this is where you're going to price yeah. at. I can so prove it. So in addition to providing bank owned comps, I'm going to recommend that you start tracking data on your market, what's happening, number of active listings, number of sold comps, yep. start including those in your BPO disputes. Include your showing reports like you would always do. Include your price changes, okay? And just be aware, guys, that inventory goes up, sales go down, you're going to have BPO disputes on your hand, and you're going to have to come from a place of confidence, a place of authority, and let the bank know that they're really not as up and uh, aware of values well, as they I'll think they are. Well, I'll tell you. I'm not ripping on the banks. I'm, I'm just not saying, ripping on them either. There's but no way they can possibly keep up with the data quicker than you can. No, I mean, I had a... You're you, more in the know. You were on the phone call with me last week. We were talking to an executive of, of a major lender, uh -huh. and, and he commented about the market, quote, stabilizing. And I think that over the last couple of days of videos, we've proved that at least in Phoenix, I'm not going to say it's everywhere, but at least in Phoenix, the market is far from, quote, stabilized. Yep. We have issues and we're going to have more. So understand that BPO disputes are going to have to be a bigger part of your focus and, and, and just overall vision as we go through the rest of 2010, because inventory is up, the number of buyers are down. You guys, that, that means that we're going to have a dispute here. We're going to have more disputes on our hands, and we're going to have to overcome them, okay? So we're just going to have to learn how to work together with the banks and uh, provide that information. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. ShortSalePowerHour.com. One, two, three. Short Sale Power Hour. Short Sale Power Hour.